Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome back to 10,000 and Below, where we go through the depths and the bottom of the games on Board Game Geek that are ranked low and see if any of them are actually hidden gems or maybe just nostalgic. Uh, we're pretty low at this point, 17,401, so here we go. First, we'll take a look here at Fourth Dimension. Um, I always take a look at the first one here, so we'll come back to that. Let's see what else we got here. Elementals, Hit the Deck. I feel like I've seen Hit the Deck before. There's a Harry Potter game. What do you know? I gave that one a six. Million dollars, but... who? I bet that's the kind of game, without even looking at it, I bet that's the kind of game where you get something great, but there's a catch. I think we just looked at one like that, a superhero one like that. Monopoly, Empire, and Balancing Aliens, which I gave a 6-2. All right, here we go. Fourth Dimension. Ooh, that's kind of a uh, freaky-looking box cover, huh? Let's see. Very much an abstract strategy game. When did this game come out here? 1977. Uh, you get six warriors, three rangers, two guardians, and a time ward. Guardians can only capture that. Blah, blah, blah. But only the lowly warriors can capture the Time Ward and win the game. I love this. It says, the game has an inconveniently small game board in plastic pieces. <laughs> so it, was, it first came out in a magazine and then got bigger. Well, this looks like a nicer version. You're right. They do look like chairs. Hmm. All right. Hit the deck. This is from Fun Decks. New and improved... It was originally from Hit the Deck. Huh. Nobody's reviewed this one. It's from Fundex. Oh, so it's similar. It's like an Uno similarity. I wonder how they got away with that. What do you know? So what do you know is based on the public radio uh, show, What Do You Know, which I've listened to a couple times and I've enjoyed it. Um, so it's apples, apples. You read these different questions and they're just weird questions. So it's like, it's a trivia game, but with things like this in Florida, how many cars are there for every 10 residents? So apparently there are 12 cars for every 10 residents living down here. That seems low million dollars, but what would you do for a million dollars? For a million dollars, all right, let's see here. Oh, you get a million dollars, but every time your voice gets above regular volume, you must twerk in the face of a near stranger. Yeah, I don't know. This is another Cards Against Humanity thing. This is from Rooster Teeth. Hmm. Monopoly Empire. So this is a bigger Monopoly game. came out in 2013. This was Branding Branding, where they had a whole bunch of different companies. This one got really shellacked, I remember. Um, Coca-Cola, Xbox, Samsung, McDonald's. The, I mean, this is consumerism at its peak. Own the world's top brands. Wow, that's crazy. Wow. That just sounds so unfun. Cool pieces, though. All right, Balancing Aliens. So Balancing Aliens, so let me pull up the board here. You can look at it. It is a board that's going to wobble. Wow, all that loading for that small of a picture. There's got to be a bigger picture somewhere. There you go. And you're rolling dice and then placing them on that side. The farther out you place them, the more points you get. But obviously, the farther out, the whole thing's... Wah. The game is a little too fragile for me. It's fine, but it, it falls over e you know, easily. And it's kind of a once-and-done thing. But at the same time, it's kind of a neat game to mess around with and play. So it looks neat. If I had this game, and I would get a copy of this one, actually, for the Dice Tower Library, I would set this up on a table and let people play it. Uh, let's see. We continue down. Wind and Wetter. I like the name of that one. I and Seek, a seven. Wow, a seven. I gave this one pretty low. Run for your life, Candyman. Monopoly Marvel Ventures. Nope. Twisted Fish. 
Ah, Twisted Fish. I remember that one. 828. I don't know what this one is, but we have to look at it because there's 121 ratings. X-Men Monopoly is... <laughs> I enjoy that. So Monopoly Marvel Avengers, which came out five years later, is only a few rankings above Monopoly X-Men. And it has one more rating. <laughs> Quiet phone. I'm not talking to you. Uh, let's see. Seen it, Disney. Well, I'm sure it's just seen it. And then Crow Magnet. All right, here we go. Wind and Wetter. That's kind of a pretty box cover. I'm wondering if this one ever came out in English. It looks like an abstracted Euro game. Let's see. Move nine pieces to the opposite side. There are different train pieces you can cross or not cross based on the weather conditions, but you can change the weather. Yeah, winning moves. This looks like a winning moves game, actually. They have that look to them. I and Seek. You have a double-sided spinner. It has images on both sides, which you have three holes. Oh, yeah. I remember this one. I just reviewed this one recently. No, not too recently. But you have these, these uh, devices here. And so you do it, and then you spin it. And you're looking through the different holes trying to find the object. I know that that's a, a spin-off of finding a game that, you know, finding an object, you know, where's Waldo style. But here, it's not the fastest person who can find it because you're also spinning the spinners. And so based on where your spinner might be, someone who's slower might just spin and go, oh, here it is. It, it really evens it out. It's nice. Run for your life, Candyman. So Smirk and Dagger likes to take basic things and then make them silly. And that's what Run for Your Life, Candyman is. Four points for effort. This game makes me laugh to talk about. It's just not a very good game. But you run around, and they have a hit point sheet here, very similar to Battletech. And as you hit each other, you X off the boxes. And if your leg is destroyed, you take the piece of paper and rip the leg off. I just find that to be incredibly amusing. The game itself, not a great game. But if you think that theme is funny, and a lot of people do, run for your life, Candyman. Twisted Fish. This is Go Fish. Uh, but you also have memory and bluffing and special cards. I don't think... When did I review Twisted Fish? 2006. So 14 years ago. I really feel like I would give this one a five or less at this point. Man, I don't like that artwork. I don't know how I got a six. But back then I was probably nicer than I am now. That's what my kids tell me anyway. <laughs> Eight to 28. Pressure luck card game. You get one card, and then you draw an extra card to see whoever's cards are closest to 8 or 28 without going over, share the gems among them. That doesn't sound terrible, actually. Well, let's see what the comments say. It's like advanced blackjack. Group blackjack. Blackjack, blackjack, blackjack for kids. I would like this game. I'll have to try it sometime. All right, so this here says reimplement attack gem dealer in Ivanhoe, which let's take a look at all three of those games. Ivanhoe is ranked 2084. Gem dealer 14,342. And attack 14,353. This one is apparently worse than all of those. So gem dealer. It's also a sequel to Great Wall of China. So it's a game in Poland. That's probably why. I mean, it's set only in Poland. I like the way that, that I like the way the box looks. The theme looks fun. Oh, that's a nice box. I love that cover. Seen it, Disney. Are you a Disney fan? Here's your seen it. All right, Crow Magnon. This is from Fanny Chirp and Oliver Mercier. Oliver Mercier sounds like I've heard their name before. Nope. This is, they've done 14 games, but this is their second highest rated game. Well, let's look at Fanny Chirp. I've never heard that name before. And they've done three games. And this is the only one that's ranked. Well, it's a time's up. You have to guess words and move ahead in the adventures. It's a time's up style game, huh? It looks like it probably takes a simple fun party game and adds more rules. That's what I'm guessing. Oh, you're nitpicking on someone everywhere, not just on their head. 
I can see why this is ranked low. Alrighty, let's continue on. Knowing me, knowing you. Knowing me, knowing you. Seen it TV, I'm not gonna click another seen it link. They're all pretty much the same with just different themes. Greedy wizards. All right, you need to you need to stop telling me to keep walking here. Doom Trooper. Uh, let's see what else we got. Jailbreakers plan your escape. Mother sheep. And app letters. Oh, riddles and riches. I do want to take a look at riddles and riches. All right, knowing me, knowing you. This is from. Really? The, 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 the lyrics of a song is the, the theme, I mean, is the description of this game? That's really interesting. Like, no one bothered to actually, I'm assuming that's not how the, that's funny. Fans also like Battle of the Sexes, Weakest Link. All right. Guess it's a party game. What a weird description. Doom Trooper from 1994, re-implemented by Super Trooper, which no one knows about. It's in the Mutant Chronicles universe. Is this a CCG? You're getting side points. I've heard of this game. I've never actually played it. It's really low ranked, yeah, customizable. It's ranked 261 in the hotly contested customizable category. Jailbreakers. This is from Quillis Games. Well, I gotta say, I don't hate that cover. Yeah, that artist, I like this style of art. I like the uh, graphic design. Who is the artist here? Jackie Davis. Let's see what else they've done. Or she's done. Okay. Oh, Viticulture. Interesting. Stockpile. Yeah. Coliseum. Ex Libris. Well, she needs to get more attention because I like her art. May perhaps not for this particular game. Huh. Looks interesting. Mother Sheep is from Playroom Entertainment. Hmm, it's a tile laying game where you're placing like sticks out instead. Huh, I wonder why I never saw this one. Man, I maybe this is not a good game, but it looks interesting. It looks like you put the same colors on top of stuff. Huh, this looks like it'd be interesting to try. At least 2006. Let's see why people don't like it. It's fun and casual. There's some t potential. It's nasty. Take that. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, my. Okay, never mind. Those, those, are, those are really bad ratings. App letters. It's from the people who made Bananagrams. It looks really similar to man and Bananagrams. Uh, it looks like you're playing on one board rather than your own board, like Bananagrams. Okay. Is that, to say, comparison? Apple's letters from Bananagrams. I guess I'd want to see a comparison of them. Riddles and Riches. So this is designed by F Frank DiLorenzo from r, r Games. Now, I say this every once in a while because I like to remind people of it, but r, r Games, we don't know what it stands for. I promise you it doesn't stand for Riddles and Riches or Riches and Riddles. Why? Because I've guessed both of those. Um... There's a contest, an ongoing contest, to guess what R&R &R stands for. I've been doing it now for well over a decade. Just, I randomly guess. Apparently, there's clues online and things. Uh, Frank loves puzzles. In fact, he's part owner and designer of an escape room in Tampa, Florida. And so this is kind of a precursor to that, this game. This, I believe, is the first published game from Out of the Box Publishing. Not out of the Box, R&R &R Games, sorry. Still wonder what R&R &R stands for. It does not stand for rest and relaxation. I checked that too. Or relaxation and rest. Or riddles and relaxation. Because I checked that. It also stands for something. Because I said it doesn't stand for anything. That was one of my guesses. There's nothing. It's just R&R. &R. And then I did R&R. &R. I've guessed so many different things. 
All right, let's continue down here. C. Oscuro Padrino. Taggle. Zombie. Valiant Universe, the deck building game. It just makes me sad sometimes to see these games on the list here. Monopoly World of Warcraft is better than Zombieopoly, but they're not, both not as good as the superhero Monopolies. <laughs> There's like four Monopolies on this list here. Then we got Yum, Sanitarium, Can't Catch Harry. Yes, I can. Miskatonic School for Girls. This one is way low. Another Monopoly. Simpsons Tree has a horror. Wow. The Monopoly's Barbecue Party. Well, we'll talk about that. And Farkle. All right. So Farkle, I believe, is the first big game that we've come across that's ranked low. Like, we've been going through these different games. We're going to see more and more of these as we get lower and lower. Once we hit the 1800s. We're not far away from the end of this, folks. And once we get down lower, you're going to see some, some big name games that you know about. Farkle is one of the higher rated of those. All right. Let's take a look at these. See, Escudo Padrino. Oh, this is uh, similar to II Dark Overlord, which is like a storytelling game. Except this one's Mafia. Taggle. Draw a card, read out loud one of the thought lines. Each player must use one of their retort lines to go back. Really? That's the game? Just reading and then retorting. You better have a really, I mean, this is not in English, but it would have to be really snappy, witty writing. Zombie from Cosmos. This is from 2015, so that's not that long ago. You roll your dice, trying to give these cubes to your opponents. That looks like a kid's game. Someone had the, the word zombie in their head, and they decided to make it. All right, Valiant Universe, the deck building game. This is from Catalyst Games. I really wanted to like this. I don't know anything about the Valiant Universe. I know that it's a comic book universe, but I don't know much about it. This was, unfortunately, just a really clunky, clunky deck building game. I wanted to like it, but it just didn't work out well. I want to like superhero games. That's not one of them. Monopoly, World of Warcraft. What do the pieces look like? Oh, that's a cool hammer. Lots <laughs> of money. Paper money. Paper money in Warcraft makes no sense. Neither does the whole game of Monopoly. That's kind of a cool cover, but nope. All right, Yum! From 1959. This is very similar to the traditional game Yacht. It's different than Yahtzee, which was also based on Yacht. Let's look at the scoring sheet. One, two, three, four, five, six. Bonus straight, full, high, low, yum. Is yum all five? Sanitarium. This is from 2012. This is from Asmati Games. Interesting. I didn't know Asmati made this one. Yeah. This doesn't look very interesting. Hmm. Can't catch Harry. Oh, this is from Breaking Games. This is based on that online comic, right? Or the YouTube channel, The Odd Ones Out. All right. Looks like it's a mass market style game. Miss Katana School for Girls. This is from Edge Entertainment, Fun to 11. Now, Fun to 11 has made some good games. This, unfortunately, was a deck deconstruction game. I want to say this was kickstarted. Definitely had a lot of very excited people about this one, and it just wasn't very good. I remember my review. I gave it a four, and I got some negative feedback on that. Like, no, this is a really good game. I did not enjoy it, and... Um, you build your opponent's deck, you're adding bad cards to the other ones, you're trying to make your own deck better. It doesn't work, and I think a lot of people liked it because they liked the whole Miskatonic School um, type thing. Miskatonic School for boys, I think, is a better game, but they're completely different games. They have nothing other than the theme is the same. Barbecue Party. This is a great dexterity game for kids and adults. This grill here is going to pop off at the slightest shake. You use the tongs and you take stuff off it. or you, no, First you put them on, then you take them off. It's silly, 
works for kids. This is mass market. But I, I, I am so... I am so just overjoyed to see the grill go pop and a person yells and jumps because it's, it's very sensitive and I don't know. This one's better than it should be. And Farkle, I already mentioned Farkle. Highest score, but stop before you bust. This is the very, they call it here, this is the proprietary version of the dice game Farkle, but there's so many of these games out there. The very first one I played, I think, was called Cheater. There's a lot of these versions out here. You roll, you stop whenever you want to, push your luck. All righty, let's continue on here. Star Wars Destroy Death Star game from 1977. Let's see what else we got here. Civility, I just like the name of that one. Bugs and Company has 178 ratings. CIA Collected All, what a dumb name. Kismet. 223 ratings. Let's see. Monopoly Fortnite. <laughs> this is definitely the Monopoly 100. It's, it's fascinating to me to see how many Monopolies. Unless, of course, we're so deep that we're going to see tons of Monopolies on all the, uh, the... as we continue going down farther. Foreshadowing, maybe. I don't know. Dweebs, Geeks, and Weirdos. No. Flock. Oof. Sad to see that one so low. Another Monopoly. Lord of the Rings. Poop. <sighs> Party Pooper Edition. Casino Hot Dog. Okay, I want to look at that one. And 3,012, which I gave a 3 to. So Star Wars, the Death Star. Ooh. Ooh. As a kid, I would have wanted this so much. That looks so cool. Well, I mean, it looks cool from uh, Tom Vassell. Well, I was one year old when this game came out. But, man, those kids look like they're having fun. Civility. Rising status, a unique game that combines wizards with woolly mammoths, thieves with tanks, and the absolute with the archaic. Hmm. Is Cthulhu punching a spaceship getting hit by a wizard? Is Cthulhu not wearing pants? I don't know if I like the art for this. Yeah, this looks like a game where they're like, hey, let's just have everybody fight everybody else. Oh, that's not good art. Those are okay meeples. Well, some of them are. That zombie's not very... How can you make a meeple look bad? Well, oh, whatever. Bugs and Co. A Bruno for Duty game. Everyone plays at the same time. Just grab things over as fast as you can, finding matches. Well, there you go. I've already answered why this one's ranked so low. Oh, that's not very good art either. Oh, that's unfortunate. All right, Kismet. Kismet, travel Kismet. I believe I just played like a... This is another Yahtzee-style game. Let's take a look at the score sheet. Aces, deuces, trays, fours, fives, and sixes. Two pair, three of a kind, straight, flush, full house, full house. Oh, there's two full houses. Full house the same color. Oh, that's interesting. Four of a kind. Y Yarborough. That's, oh, that's Chance. And Kismet. Man, there's so many different versions of Yahtzee. Oh, this one saddens me. Valentina Moscon here is the artist for this. She also did Council of Four, Dungeon Bazaar, Test Rack, Dream On. Great art. Love the art of Flock. I was so pumped based on the art. But this is unfortunately a really boring game. You're going to use these cards and use combinations of birds to get different things. It's like an engine building game. It's just not that interesting, but such great design and art. Graphic design, I mean. Casino Hot Dog. Hot dog, hot dog, hot diggity dog. Oh, kids game from, why is it, why is it called Hot Dog? Oh, just called the Hot Dog Casino. Okay. 3012 from Cryptozoic Entertainment. It's a millennium... You start out with cards, you buy cards. Is this a deck building game? I can't remember. It's been a long time since I played this. But the art is the. The game just doesn't do well at all. Ah! Forgot how much I disliked how this one looks. Oh well. Cryptozoic has gotten much better since 2013 when I reviewed this. Hey, we made it to the end of another video! So, there you go.
that's some more games and 10 thousand below thanks so much for watching are there games that i should have talked about here did you want to talk about all those different monopolies mention it in the comments below until next time i'm tom vassal and you've been watching the dice tower